Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Heart Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. You know, are you in a place where you just, Lord, things have got to change today. I need a breakthrough. And you have got a revelation. As you dwell in the secret place of His presence, in His Word, you've got a revelation of who He is. He is the Lord Almighty. He is your breakthrough. Everything you need is in Him. And you understand your inheritance because of Him. Like, Lord, this is not my inheritance. Something has got to change. I need a breakthrough. You may be facing a financial issue, a health issue, a, a, you know, an issue with relationships, whatever it is. Something has got to change today. I need a breakthrough. How do I reach in, touch your heart, Father, so that you respond and release the resources necessary to bring about my breakthrough? Well, if you're ready for a very powerful now word, then let's pray. And let's press in and let us receive. Amen. we come in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. And I thank you that we would have eyes to see, ears to hear, and Father, a hearing heart. I thank you that you would give us a greater, deeper, broader, wider revelation of who you are, so that change comes today, so that we get a breakthrough today. And I thank you that, Jesus, we just want to glorify you. We want to worship you and honor you. Holy Spirit, so fill this place and let your presence lift us. So, Father, we go into that glorious place where we're found in you. So we worship you. We glory in you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you are Lord. I thank you, you are the Almighty God, that you are more than sufficient. We just worship you. We glory in you. We thank you, Jesus. I thank you. You are the God of my breakthrough. You are the Lord of my peace. You're the Lord, my righteousness, and I honor you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless the name of the Lord our God. We bless you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, breathe on us, move in us, and through us, and that real worship arise that magnifies you, Jesus, and lifts us out of this mud and mire and places us on that rock found in you in the secret place. And I thank you, Father, in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said... Amen. We're going to just home in on a very powerful word. And it's regarding the mercy of the Lord God. So stay with me. This is a powerful, powerful message. If we look in Matthew chapter 9, towards the end, Jesus has gone through the villages. He's been preaching. He's been healing. He's been setting people free. And if you think, so many of us would think that that's been perfect. But I want you to understand that God always has more. He's not just looking to get you out of your situation. He wants you in the place of this ongoing relationship where you grow up spiritually and you are kept. He sees these people. Yeah, they're getting the word. But unless there's somebody to minister to, to help them, that word will what? Fade. And you can't survive off of yesterday's word. So he said it's broken. He said he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And he then takes his disciples, and how does he respond? Recognizing the need, knowing the answer. He doesn't say, okay, let's release. Shepherds, come forth. No, he turns to his disciples and tells them to pray to the Lord of the harvest, the one who, it's his answer, it's his vision, so they get a revelation of who the Lord God is. And they're to ask for those shepherds for those laborers to go in, to take these sheep and help them walk strong and bold in the Lord. That's my heart cry. And I pray that that's what we want to do. We want to help see lives truly built up and walking strong in the Lord. So we see how God works, operates. 
He recognizes the need. He presents himself as the answer and calls us to ask of him so that his kingdom come, his will be done in earth, and on earth and in earth. I like the King James in earth, in our lives, in our circumstances. We're like, well, God, you know what I need, so do it. He's like, no, I need you to get a revelation that I'm your answer. And please stay with because you're going to see this today. When people got a revelation that he was the answer, that's the beginning of the change. In Jude chapter 1, verse 22, Jude chapter 1. There's many verses that we love and we memorize, but there's some verses that we probably skip over. And this is one, Jude 1, 22. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. You know, this is a verse I never thought about. For many years, my ministry, in fact, for most. But today, it's one of the driving forces. Because I look at backsliders, and we need those that are stirred. And this word, compassion, comes from a Greek word, ilio. And it's, there's two ways it can operate, naturally and spiritually. But it's talking about these deep-seated emotions that are stirred because of something terrific, you know, terrible or something difficult or whatever it is. They're stirred and demand decisive and immediate action. Something's got to change. And for example, if I took you and I showed you pictures uh, of some country of these children, with swollen bellies, you know, look terrible, starving, and said, we need your help. Something in you is moved. That, you know, if this is genuine, you need to act. You need to respond. Now, it's the same, you can either do this is a natural response. And I want to say, when we go through a trial and a difficulty, and we're in the middle of it, there's always a natural response. And most people, these deep-seated emotions, maybe you've been injured in the past, and you're broken, and it causes this emotional response to come up, demanding your rights, demanding justice, demanding all these things. But when you sow to the flesh, you will always reap death. It's not going to fix the problem, and it doesn't touch the Father. In fact, it will drive you out of that intimacy of fellowship. This is the reason why so many people are behind a veil that God didn't put there, but you have built through these emotions, through these injuries. Instead of running to Him, we're making all these emotional noises, and we're looking to the wrong people. And we've got to get a revelation of who He is and who we are because of Him so that we make a real difference, so that this emotional response is a spiritual one. Uh, I, my heart's cry, for example, with the backsliders, if I share with you the lateness of the hour, and that we need to do all we can to reach them, that might be, you might be stirred on the inside to in some way align with, to work with, so that we can accomplish this task. That's what we're talking about here. Now, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. And look at this. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him. So these blind men immediately cling to Jesus. This is now their life, so they're going after. And as they're going after Jesus, they're getting a greater revelation of who he is. Some people don't take the time to do their homework to discover who is Jesus to you. They then say, they cried out saying, Son of David, the Messiah. We, we now know who you are. And they cry out this mercy, this have mercy on us. We're stirring the mercy in you because we know about the Son of David. We know his mercies. We know the richness of his heart. We know how he operates. Why? From the word. They had a revelation from the word of the character, the quality. And they're not seeing it as they follow Jesus. And I could say that <laughs> jokingly, but you understand what I mean. They, they understood as they followed Jesus, they got a revelation of his mercy. And now it gets in them. And that's how God does. See, as we spend time, as we cling to him, we start to get an understanding of how he thinks, how he operates, and his mercy. And something stirs up in us, a righteous anger, where we say, this has got to change. This is not my inheritance. This does not bring you glory. You are the Lord, my healer. You're the Lord of my breakthrough. You're the Lord, my peace. You're the God who restores. And you begin to cry out 
and go after him, provoked by what's in you, in the hope of provoking what's in him. Because you know what's in him, because you know his thoughts, you know how he operates. Now, if we go to Mark chapter 10, we see the accounts of blind Bartimaeus. Powerful story. It's clear that he looks like he came from a family of wealth. But he's blind. And he's there begging on the streets. It just happens in that day that Jesus comes by. And he becomes aware that Jesus is there. And look what happened in, in Mark 10, verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, so he knows somebody's in the crowd, there's a lot of commotion, a lot of noise, and he's told, it's Jesus. Now, they didn't say, it's Jesus the Messiah. They saw it as Jesus. Look what happens. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, Jesus the Messiah, is what he was saying. Have mercy on me. You are the, I know who you are. And I know that you are my answer. I know that you are the God of my breakthrough. See, many people say we pray, but we don't. Our prayers are weak and feeble because we don't cling and understand. You are my answer. And that's what this story tells us. Because they come and begin to rebuke him. You need to be quiet. And when you make a stand for the things of God, you're going to find the enemy, the world, and your flesh are going to do everything to rebuke and silence you and give you all the reasons to stop. And most quit. And you have to make a decision like he did. He cried out even louder because this day things are going to change. You can either stay satisfied with the status quo because you don't want to break the decorum. Or you make a determination that this day things change. I'm going on. And when he hears then that the Messiah turns and says, Come, tell him to come. This man took his robe, which was his license, or whatever you want to call it, to beg. Throws it away because he said, This day I'm not going back. How many of you go into your prayer chamber and throw off some things and say, this day it ends? This day things change. Oh, we're like, well, I'm hoping maybe. See, it may not change physically to the eye, but you know spiritually it's changed. You've got the breath. Never leave. First of all, never pray until you've entered the zone where you're in the glory, where you're in His presence. Most of us pray, and in reality, we've, we haven't even entered the place of prayer. We're still earthly. We're still, you know, praying naturally. We haven't even begun to touch the Father's heart. We're, our prayers are bouncing off the roof. Because we don't know how to pray. Press in. We don't know how to worship and get into His presence till He becomes everything, and you're consumed in Him. You've got to get to the place where we're praying, where we're consumed. He is everything. He's what I see, not my problem. Most of us, we come with our prayer list and all we see is the problem and it overwhelms us. It's broken us. And, oh God, uh, I need you to do this. And we're worshiping and honoring the problem. Begin to praise Him. Begin to worship. Begin to cry out. Begin to lock in because you understand, I know who you are. You are the Son of David. You are the Lord my God. You are my answer, my salvation, my hope. You got that on your tongue. So that the first thing, it's all about him. How many people you know you got a guest uh, that comes over and then eats something? They don't take time to, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? They just come and turn, I need this. If, you, if your parents, sometimes your kids, I need this, take it and gone. And you're like, wow. You were more than able to give him, but it breaks your heart that they didn't take any time to connect, to go deeper because there was more. We want to give more. And you're going to find in the presence of God, He has so much more that He wants to give you, not just the breakthrough, but we're just, give me this. And He says, come to my presence. And you're going to find that 90% of the answer is found there. We're focused always on the 10. If you do this, and He said, if you just would come in my presence, you would be lifted so that you never go back there. So that it changes this day. I'm just giving you a bandage. Otherwise, 
And I don't want to do that. That's not how I operate. God doesn't come and just put bandages on. He wants to deliver, set you free, and bring you into something where you're spiritually prospering and blessed. And everything changes. Let me show you an example. If you look in the tribulation period, we're told that the Jewish people will be reduced to a third. A remnant. Think about that. It's horrific. It's going to be a terrible time on earth. And they're right there at the end. They're hiding. And they're uh, facing annihilations right towards the end of the tribulation period. And what happens? Jesus comes to them. But I want you to see how it works. Zechariah 12, verses 10, 10 and 11, we get the revelation. The Lord God says, I will pour on the house of David, on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. All of a sudden, the spiritual climate changes that they begin to be moved as they see, begin to pray. And they begin to see Him. They begin to press in. They're all self-preserving. They're all concerned about their lives. But something lifts them out of that where now they see Him. He's never failed them and they didn't see it. God has never failed you. But we never press in and so we, we walk with great loss and brokenness. And he's broken there because of the mercy. He said, I so desire to reach and lift you, but you won't look at me. You won't come and draw near me. Then, there's this spirit of grace that causes them to cry out, where they start to begin to see him, know who he is. We're told, yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for firstborn. They will then ask him, who did that to you? They see the, the, the nail-pierced hand. Who did that? Something breaks them. And that has to happen because this mercy so marks you, compels you, that this changes your, your trajectory, your life forever. That's how this mercy should work. It brings you to a decisive, immediate action that changes the direction of your life and it so now connects you that you're in alignment with heaven and causes heaven to move because God always responded with an immediate and decisive action when these people got a hold of here's my heart here's what I want for you and it's so good you're asking for this and I want to give you this ask for it would you come into my presence be changed and transformed and let me give this to you Let's look at Paul. Paul was a man who blatantly, deliberately attacks the church. He's, he's horrible. If he lived today, I mean, he would be one of the worst persecutors of the church that we could think of. Just a, and he's doing it all, believing he's serving the Lord. He says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, where he's talking to his spiritual son. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, persecutor and an insolent man but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly on belief how did this happen how did he come from this place where he did not qualify you and I would have just completely disqualified him if we were asked by the Lord should I show mercy absolutely not judge him let the fire fall because we don't see what he sees and we don't have the depth of this mercy and understanding and a lot of times we're being attacked by people and we see outwardly all their evil, all their mistakes and the injuries they've caused us. But we don't see them as God does. We don't see that person that God wants to pull out of them. Oh, God would give, you, give us eyes to see our, our children, our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, our family. Through your eyes, what you want to pull out of them. And you've placed us in a position that we might provoke this mercy, that it might reach them somehow, some way, and move on them. Go to Acts 9. So we're looking at the Peter, or sorry, Paul, and how he's on his way to Damascus. He's almost made it. He's not going there to do good things. He's there to injure the church. So bad that Jesus had to step in. Acts 9, 5, and 6. And he, being Paul, said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. 
So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He suddenly stands there completely broken. He suddenly realizes what he has really done. The zealousness, the, the, the persecution that he thought was doing for the Lord, it was all him. This is a moment where that mercy meets a man who doesn't deserve mercy, and it broke him. He got a hold of it. God, I don't deserve this meeting. I can imagine everything in him wants to get out. God, I'm so broken because I realize you have met me in mercy that I didn't deserve. At a critical moment, because you saved me, because God only knows what I would have done had I continued on the journey and maybe gone beyond that mark that my life would have been forever lost. Some of you are praying for your children. What if they've gone to that place where they've gone too far? Would you get a hold of this mercy? That God, you would have a divine appointment to knock them off their horse at the right time, but they need to get revelation of mercy. And may they see it in us, the power of this mercy to break you, to change you, so that the trajectory of your life is forever different, that you have a different nature. You've been tenderized. Your words are different. Your house, you clean it out. I'm not that person. This day, everything changes. Romans 10. I want you to see that he sees Jesus, gets a revelation of who Jesus is, and he calls him Lord. And this is important because look at this, Romans 9, so Romans 10, verse 8 and 9. Romans 10, verse 8 and 9. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In that moment, all the stuff that he had heard about Jesus had blasphemed, mocked suddenly is cutting so deep in him and he understands he died for me he understands all oh, great depth the judgment do him he probably understood more than most of us how he deserved judgment and everything else and he is absolutely broken and he gets such a revelation of this mercy and grace and the honor of calling him Lord because suddenly he met with the Lord. And I pray that whatever you're going through, that we meet with the Lord with such a surrender and yielding that he can correct you. You may be right in a lot of what you're saying, but the way you do it, your parts of how we act can be wrong. And in the secret place of his presence, we need to be so broken by him by that mercy, that out of that mercy we now begin to move and we now walk in a harmony with His mercy. Some people, you've been attacked by people who have treated you badly, horrifically, and you are right and they're wrong. But your response may have been sincere, may have been 90% right, a lot of truth behind it, but you did it wrongly. And the secret place, God may suddenly correct you and deal with you. And you're like, God, they need dealt with you. He said, no, I need to deal with you. Everything changes. But are you willing? I think of the woman with the issue of blood. All those years, bombarded by that bad report and what it's taken from her life, socially, mentally, physically, financially, all the things in life, it's impacted. But there came a day where she said, enough is enough because she saw who Jesus was. And she says, if I just can touch the hem, I don't have to have a deep conversation. I just got to touch the hem. There's so much on this man that she was willing to pay a price. Even if I'm going to jail and being kicked out because she's going in the crowd that she's not allowed to because if I just touch, just touch. She kept saying to herself, see, in her mind, she was no longer focused on her problem and all the bad reports, she's focused on him. And she refused to quit. I think the crowd disappeared. And I found there's a place we get into prayer where 
everything disappears and he is now everything and you're just how can I connect how do I meet you how do I get to this this is what I need the problem fades the situation but in it God brings a correction God adjusts things and you're okay with that even if you look the fool even if, God it looks like I'm losing the battle here he says, no you're winning the war John 6 verse 44 Jesus said no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day I want to tell you this you can't make God do anything he doesn't want to do but he's drawing you in his mercy he's opening your eyes in his mercy we need eyes opened so that in the secret place of his presence we are reading this as a living revelation of Jesus every word spoken into our spirit every word bringing a deeper understanding of him of the way he works his thoughts beginning to align our lives it's a partnership we are partakers with is a, a working together with him in the secret place we have been so intertwined together my thoughts intertwined and people are starting to say you're changed you don't think the same you don't walk you're one of those crazy Christians you're like Jesus in the spirit realm the enemy hates you more because you're becoming so connected that he can't tell if it's Jesus or you anymore was a lot of the old in uh, oh yeah I want to point this out so this word draw he will draw us in the Greek it means to draw with an inward power or leading and do you feel that see when you're in that trial the mercy of God in your spirit should stir you to stand but it will always drive you to Jesus do you understand what I'm saying the flesh emotions will drive you to respond to get justice on the earth and attack the people the situation to do damage and injury to make yourself heard but the mercy of your spirit man rises up and stirs you up to go after Jesus because he's your answer in the book of Galatians we're told the flesh and the spirit are in a battle together which voice are you going to listen to which one are you going to feed typically we feed the wrong one we wake up we have a bad day and we flow with the natural emotional man instead of crucifying him and making the quality decision because it's not easy we have to learn a new discipline in our lives to go this way it's not something overnight you are changed right there in them something in you changed but you're going to make a decision every single day I'm going after him until this becomes your nature your way of walking and when you're there it's okay I'm gonna take you deeper you're always finding always deeper waters for you so that you emanate you carry that presence it lingers it drips from you and the bigger vision that God's putting in you to pull out of you are you with me some of you God are trying to bring this breakthrough because he's got a bigger vision some people he wants to launch into ministry there are things that are standing in your way hindering you and the real problem is you he's got to kill you he's got to get rid of the emotional man or woman crucified in the sick place and teach you how to be stirred by the emotions of the spirit man so that you become decisive and immediate you go after because you know your God and you know how to respond to the enemy correctly unmoved first John 4 19 we love him because he loved us first and I want to read this from the Woos. Woos was a powerful Greek scholar who has a translation of the Bible uh, he also helped writing for example the Amplified and he says as for us let us be constantly loving because he himself first loved us so you get your eyes open somehow some way in your life your eyes were open because somebody was praying for you you should be grateful somebody cared enough to pray for you 
The only reason you're indicating somebody prayed for you. And it caused your eyes suddenly to be open. And you were at the right place at the right time. And that word went in and caused a work in you. And brought you to a place where there was an immediate decision you had to make. I want you, Jesus. We need more intercessors. You need to start getting caught up. Realize this battle, we're focused on this. There is a bigger battle going on. And as long as we get stuck in the mud of our battle, so the enemy has you in this situation paralyzed, you will never step forward into the big things to have a big impact and touch lives. Because your heart, it's all about the heart. Oh, I pray even right now, God's mercy is breaking you so that you get a heart for people because you get a revelation of His mercy for you. You don't deserve sometimes what you're going through for God to bring you out. But if He can just get your eyes to see Him so that you see His greatness, He is the Almighty, He is your answer so that you run to Him and you keep running. You make it, I'm going after you. I'm not stopping. See, you don't have no problem grumbling, complaining, and telling the whole world about what you're going through. But we can't give Jesus more than five minutes. And yet He's your answer. Because our revelation of Him is too small. Oh Lord Jesus, this day changes. Break us with the depth of Your mercy because You're so moved by it. You're rich in this mercy. You long to immediately and decisively respond and demonstrate Your greatness in our lives. That this day, that uh, burden, that depression, that discouragement that's clung to you is broken off. You're going to get an immediate response from heaven. Some of you, yeah, you need the, the big situation dealt with. You may be standing for healing your finances. And maybe you don't get the immediate healing or the financial breakthrough, but you do get the peace. You do get the joy. You do get that lifting of the weight, lifting of the problem, and you know your God's got it. The victory is on the way. You've been stuck in this place and Jesus wants to meet with you, the depth of His mercy, and break you out of it this day. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And He wants to give you uh, His power, His love, and soundness of mind. He wants to pour that into you right here, right now, because of the depths of His mercy. And as He pours in, that mercy should so consume you because you want to be like Him that it breaks you. And you see people out of that mercy. There's the evidence. I tell people, if you're a secret place dweller, there's evidence in your life being changed. And one of that is this mercy that now becomes such a driving force that you're so quickly touched, so quickly moved. The Spirit just breathes on you and you're in the secret place crying out for somebody interceding for somebody. People attack you and you're broken in the secret place, crying out for them. We may not know all the impact, but it's not our situation. Lord, it's you. I want you. I want to be faithful. I want to be found pleasing to you. You are the Lord my God. I think some of you right now need to worship. Some of you need to get into that place of just glorying in the Lord your God. You've been so consumed by that problem. May you get a revelation of His mercy and begin to worship Him. God, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Fill with that. Be consumed by that right here, right now in the name of Jesus. Let every weight, every heaven has been broken off your life right here, right now. Because Jesus is the Lord your God. He is the Almighty God. He is the Lord your peace, the shepherd. He is your answer. Press in. Go after Him. Some of you may need to lock yourself in a room and keep going after Him. Keep going back. Keep pursuing Him. Keep doing it till you get it. Because He wants to answer and demonstrate great and awesome deeds of righteousness, the greatness of our God in your life. And it starts when His peace so consumed you, may it fill you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, even now in the name of Jesus. And the joy of His presence, that fullness of joy, just so touch and tickle, marinate you. Even right now, in the name of Jesus, the liberty. Jesus, we give you worship. Jesus, you are the Lord our God. We give you worship. We give you the glory. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. We cry out to you. We run to you. I thank you that you meet with us. That as we draw nigh unto you, you draw nigh unto us. You are our answer. You are the greater, stronger, strong man. And we come to you, the rock of our salvation. Jesus, we worship you. I bless the name. I give you glory. And I thank you. I really pray 
this simple message has ministered to you, reached you, and has helped you. And I say, if it has, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments? Because as you do, you really help us in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus and the algorithms of YouTube to reach more people. And let's reach more backsliders. Together we can do it. Every video we pray about for many hours because we want a video that reaches, fulfills the purpose, the vision we have. And every video, you know, takes a prayer support and a financial support. And that's why we ask partners. So you cling, you join together with us. And if it's ministered, you may minister to more. And you can stand with us so that it has the impact that it touches. Thank you, Jesus. For more information, simply go to robertparis.org and go to the partner page. May you marinate in this message. May it so help you and bless you and enable you to begin to step forward in the purpose. There's more in you. There's more in you. You've said, I've come to the end. No, there's more in you. Some of you, I'm, just, I'm done, okay? Then die. Let the old man die. And let this day the new man rise up because there's more in you. There's more in you. And you're going to find this is a place that God wants to bring divine promotion. He's been trying to kill you. He's been carrying the sword to slice you, bring you down, to bring out the new man, where you are totally walking with him, totally surrendered. Yeah, you were sincere. Yeah, you were, it was all you. This day it changes. You stop walking emotionally, driven by those emotions, captivated by his heart, seeing with his love, swallowed up in it this day, amen? Well, I thank you for watching. I really encourage you to check out our videos on The Secret Place and develop your secret place life. And may you be blessed in your coming, your going, and all that you put your hands to. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.